What is the Ansible.buildin Ansible collection? And what is the Ansible.legacy collection? Today, we are going to talk about the Ansible most important modules and plugins and how we can use in our everyday playbook and also how we can create some custom one and how to enable when needed. I'm Luca Burton, Ansible Automation Expert and welcome to today's lesson. What is Ansible.built-in collection? The Ansible.built-in collection refers to module and plugin shipped with Ansible Core. Technically, is a synthetic collection virtually constructed by the Core engine. What is Ansible.legacy collection? The Ansible.legacy collection is a superset of the Ansible.built-in with custom plugins in the configured path and adjacent directories. Technically, is a synthetic collection virtually constructed by the core engine. And this is the default one when you don't specify any collection for your Ansible module. So this is very, very important. Demo. Let's jump in a quick demo to demonstrate the difference between the Ansible.built-in versus Ansible.legacy collections. I'm going to create a custom debug plugin module that prints the extra text foo when used with a message parameter. Let's see the different result when we execute the with ansible.built-in, ansible.legacy, or without specifying any collection. The code is the following. Are you excited? Let's move it on. First of all, welcome to my editor. This is a simple text editor, so you can use whatever you want. And let me specify some common file that we are going to use during this example, the inventory, we don't need any extra host, so let me test this code on localhost, specify ansible underscore connection local. Then let me add the ansible.cfg, the configuration file, to enable the action plugin from a custom directory. I can do using the default section, specify action underscore plugin and the plugin location. In my case, under plugins slash action. This is also a very common place where to store action plugin and I'm going to create the debug plugin. So let me create a debug.py underneath that directory. Okay, so I would like to start the debug module plugin, but I don't want to start from zero. So let me jump to the Ansible GitHub repository and take some inspiration from a plugin that already exists. Actually, if you are familiar with Ansible, you know that uh, there is uh, already one action plugin that is called debug and is used for printing out uh, the messages on the screen. So let me scroll it down and find it out the source code of this plugin. As you can see, it's 99 line of code and it's super simple to understand, to be honest, because this is like the documentation, the one that we can see on the, uh, on the page. No, this is only the documentation. Let me jump back. I did something wrong. It should be here under the plugins area. Oh, here we are. Yes, under the plugin, action plugin, and where everything happened, debug.py. Here we go. So 85 line of code, and this is where the fun happened. Okay, after there are, as expected, there is a message plugin, there is a message parameter, and if we can scroll down, you see that nine line 74 is concatenating the result of a message with a content of a variable. This line is the one that we would like to customize in our Ansible playbook. So in our custom plugin, so let me get a row and uh, select all, copy, 
and paste in my editor. Or oh, I really love to take inspiration from my code in the open source projects. Back on my editor, now I need only to paste the code, here we go, and edit the line. We already seen that the line that we would like to customize is number 74. So let me concatenate this string with the string foo. Let me add also some parentheses so everything make more clear. I don't think it's necessary, but okay. So the result message will be the original message plus foo. That makes sense. Now let's see in action how this new module will affect Ansible. So uh, let's create some uh, uh, some playbook that showcase this difference. So let's start with Ansible built-in. So free dash for the beginning of YAML file name debug module demo. Uh, that is target host all of our inventory. In this case, we have only localhost. Let me define some variable. I like uh, uh, fruit today. Fruit, not fruit. And for example, apple. So, and then on the task session, only one that is name, for example, built in. So it will be easy and recognizable for our execution. Ansible built in dot debug and on the message field we are going to print it out the value of a variable for it. Okay, cool. Empty line and the end and we are done. Now we can copy and paste the same code on the legacy and make just a little modification. So uh, this is not built in. I prefer to specify the legacy. Legacy. And let me substitute the ansible.built in with ansible legacy. Okay, same code. Uh, let me print, copy also in a new playbook called ansible.vanilla. This I call it vanilla because for me it's more simple, like vanilla. And uh, let me use the debug module straight away without specify any collection. Makes sense? Now we have a three different Ansible playbook that use a, a different Ansible debug module. Let's execute and see the result. Are you ready? Let's have fun. Let's move to the terminal. Welcome to my terminal. Now let's see how things are moving. So I was already copying all the file of my project inside this directory. As you can see, there is the inventory file, Ansible configuration, and the custom action plugin debug. So six file in uh, free directory. Uh, also, I have the free Ansible playbook. And now let's see the different behavior when executed with Ansible dash playbook uh, command. Let me specify the inventory with a dash e parameter. And which one we would like to start? Let's start with Ansible built-in YML. So this playbook was using the ansible.builtin debug module. So we are expecting to see only the Apple message on the screen. And here we are. We have the original Apple message on the screen. Now, let me show you what happened if I'm using the Ansible legacy instead. This time I'm expecting to execute the custom Ansible plugin. So I'm expecting to see Apple and the extra text foo on the screen. Let me execute and here we are. We have Apple foo. Under the hood, this uh, custom uh, code was executed. So imagine how hard move harmful could be if somebody has access to your project and you can inject extra uh, extra code in your execution. Now, this is very important, for example, for Ansible Vanilla, the playbook without specify any collection, that uh, is using the Ansible legacy 
collection underneath. As you can see, the result is Apple Foo. So be very careful when uh, about the access of your Ansible project because this could be a very important security flow. I hope now you understand better the difference between Ansible.built-in, Ansible.legacy, and without specify any collection. I think this is a great foundation for your playbook execution. And I know that some of you are still familiar with Ansible 209 syntax, specify only the module name. This is the reason why it's important to specify the full collection in your code. Now you know more about the Ansible.built-in and the Ansible legacy collections. This is a great foundation for your Ansible playbook onward. And I hope now you understand better why it's important to specify the full Ansible collection in our playbook, because uh, if somebody has access to our project, uh, can uh, inject uh, some uh, different module to our execution, and maybe we ended up with a different behavior. So be very careful, and this is a very important security foundation from your DevSecOps uh, methodology. Thank you for watching. I hope this lesson was useful for you. See us on the next lesson and have a great automation day. Yay!